Hello, I'm Dave Moitz, and welcome to Successful Farming. What is the best deal in farm iron these days? Late model four-wheel drive tractors. Join me as I track the prices being paid for John Deere 9360R tractors. Ray Bohax, the engine man, is back with great tips on wheel bearing repair. And after these brief messages, I travel to Wisconsin to tour a service truck created from an ambulance. So please stay tuned. You know, farmers are genius about repurposing equipment and vehicles. And that is certainly the case with Brooks Dairy Service Truck that covers the repair and maintenance chores for their operation located near Wapaka, Wisconsin. This unique service truck was created from a salvage single axle semi truck and an ambulance service body that Ron Brooks discovered. Let's go talk to Ron about his creation. So Ron, you truly have an emergency vehicle when it comes to your service truck, and that's what the basis of this truck was. Uh, you've had this for about 10 years. You gotta tell me, this is a kind of a put together deal too. It is. So explain what we have here. What you have is a single axle semi that used to pull a, a, a ladder, a 100 foot ladder in Vancouver um, and whoever built it was a gearhead because it has four-wheel air disc brakes, it has aluminum wheels, it has a six-speed programmable transmission. So somebody built it right. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a, a, an emergency body on top of it that sat on a marine base inside for 20 years. Well, I was going to ask, the marine insignia, or the, the, that came with it then? No, that was separate. Yeah. I bought three of those units. Okay, three, why three? Did they all come as a unit buy? Yeah, it, I, bought, I bought them for $200 a piece. Seriously? Yeah, so I couldn't pass it up. They were worth more than that a scrap. Do you mind if I ask what the, the uh, single axle semi sold $500. For? Ah, so you started out with all of 600, Seven, 700 bucks. 700 bucks. And you married these together. Uh, did you take the, um, you had to extend the uh, frame out extended then. the frame a tad um, added a bigger fuel tank oh, but okay. other than that just minor details in the cab itself you actually have several there's a lot of seating in there then. yep it, it's not only our service truck but sometimes it becomes a party vehicle uh, <laughs> <laughs> it has gone we're, we're competitive barefooters so the top of this is diamond plate and you can actually sit on it and there's a ladder going up there so when we go to events like uh, Barefoot Nationals, yeah. we can change clothes inside or keep our wetsuits inside yeah. and put lawn chairs up on top and get a bird's eye view of the so event. It's also a fun vehicle. It can well. be, yes. But, but if you have to take guys to the field, you can load them up in there too as Absolutely. well, Absolutely. Right? Yep. It's really handy to have that back seat. Mm -hmm. um, we have another truck just like this that has a water tank on it, uh, the, the sister to this truck. And the same thing, but we took all the seats out of the back of that one just so we can put totes. And we can actually slide chemical totes or you know dry powders the in the back. The and then we use that for our, our, our spray truck. One of the advantages of getting this salvage ambulance body, which was rigged for military use, is that it came equipped with high pressure air tanks and electrical outlets and hookups. There's an air system. This was made for filling uh, SCBA tanks or uh, um, Fireman's tanks oh, or, scuba, okay. or scuba tanks. Right. Those are actually 7,000 psi bottles. My gosh. So I don't need 7,000 psi. So I just replumbed it and ran the truck's air compressor system into those tanks. Oh, you don't have to have a separate generator compressor. No, I. So I use the truck compressor and just plumbed it into those tanks. Yeah. So by the time I get to the field, the tanks are charged at 150 psi and wow. with four bottles in there plus the frame rail bottles. I can run one inch impacts um, all day long. No, well, not all day, but it's certainly until, you know, I can get done whatever I need to get done. Ron installed a diesel generator on his emergency vehicle, which feeds off the truck's existing fuel tanks. And then the generator sits on the opposite side. Generator's front right corner. Okay. And that's diesel, so it doesn't have to have a separate fuel source. That's plumbed right into the truck's fuel tank. So it's, a, it's just a small 5,000 watt diesel generator. Right. 
but um, which was a smart move on your part to be able to figure out that that was diesel. Another tip you'd give to other guys. If yeah, absolutely. Over. Don't put a gas generator in and just add the complexity. And then you have the danger of fumes yeah. uh, in, a, in an enclosed compartment mm -hmm. and a spark. Um, I wired it in so it has electric start right from the truck's batteries. You oh, don't have really? to have separate, you know. Yeah. So yeah, make it simple. Just run it on diesel. Run it off the truck's electric system. Uh, don't put a separate battery in, don't risk a spark. Certainly I wouldn't have a gas generator in an enclosed compartment like that. You know, the beauty of an ambulance body on Brooks vehicle is that it provides an enclosed and climate controlled workroom. The top part where you have the work area, that's enclosed. So you could actually do work in there in the field if it were raining. Or if well, raining or remember, we're at 44 degrees north latitude, so it gets a little chilly here yeah. once in a while. So the back has a separate heating and air conditioning system. Oh, no kidding. Separate from the cab. So you can create your own environment back there. Uh, it, it has a standalone heating and air conditioning system in there. Yeah. So you can, yes, in the wintertime, uh, if we're clearing fence lines or need to sharpen chainsaws. You can get in there in the warm, get your gloves off, get the chainsaws fixed or sharpened. So Ron, did you have to do anything to decommission it as an emergency vehicle? Nothing really decommissioned. All the lights and the sirens still work. The hardest thing was getting it licensed as a farm truck. Really? It has farm plates on it. And we had to send the DOT proof that it was actually a service truck. So I took pictures one day when it was out in the field and we were welding by a tractor. I said, wait a minute, I took, step, took a step back and I said, this is perfect. So I got pictures of it. And when they got the pictures, they said, oh, it really is a service truck. So they gave it farm plates. You have a dairy, fairly sizable dairy. So your daughter's back uh, kind of operating. Well, she's the- Not kind of, she is. She is the chief <laughs> operating officer for your, and, and uh, your dad's in the operation as well. And his name's- Doddridge. Doddridge. Uh, you're heading out to the field here shortly to, to chop the fourth cutting hay crop when we're shooting this. That truck is the type of thing that you bring out if you have a repair to do in the field, right? Yes. There's a certain peace of mind that comes along with knowing that pretty much any repair that we need to make, we can make. Uh, you know, hay is a fickle thing. It <laughs> would make hay when the sun shines. Right. Time is of the essence, and we can have this in the field re-weld, re-fix, fix a hydraulic hose, whatever needs to be done um, in a moment's notice. So there is a bit of peace of mind knowing that it's just sitting there at the ready. Last year on the show, we featured a unique service truck created from a school bus by the Broughton family farm in Minnesota. And today we featured this unique service truck created from a semi truck as well as an emergency body. I would love to hear about your service truck creation. You can contact me, Dave Mowitz, by going to the email address that you can find at agriculture.com slash TV. I'll see you next time on another Top Shop Tour. Hello friends and welcome to Columbiana, Ohio, the Firestone Test Farm. And I'm Ray Bohax, the successful farming engine man. But today we're gonna to talk about wheel bearings tapered roller bearings to be exact. And an interesting thing about tapered roller bearings is that many years ago it was actually invented by a farmer. So it's probably time that we learned a little bit about it. And you'll find them every place in the farm. You'll find them in vehicles, you'll find them in machinery, you'll find them in, in on wagons, and, and everything that's gonna roll is gonna have some sort of bearing. And many times a serviceable tapered roller bearing. And the key to this is serviceable, meaning that you could replace it and you could grease it. So our tutorial is gonna begin with a walk around the bearing, very, very simple. This is called the inner race. This part that holds the rollers is called the cage, and then the actual rollers themselves, and then there's also an outer race. The outer race marries the bearing together. A couple of service tidbits. If a bearing ever goes bad, it always is sold with a new outer race. A lot of people replace the bearing and don't replace the outer race. No, no, no good. Because what happens is that the bearing will wear to the race and this race will be deformed and you will ruin the new bearing in short order. The other thing that comes into play is that you need to be able to check the bearing, whether it's tightness or what we would call preload, how much tension is on it. 
Whenever you have the opportunity to jack up a piece of equipment or a vehicle, a wagon that has a tapered roller bearing, what I like to do is jack it up off the ground and then take the tire and hold it on the top and hold it on the bottom and rock it back and forth like this. So push and pull, push and pull. There should be no play. If there's any play, then the roller bearing does not have enough preload on it or has dissipated all of its grease and needs to be serviced. The next thing is the bearing needs to be cleaned and inspected when it comes time for service. You could wash this in mineral spirits, and then if you would speak to a bearing company, they tell you that they need to be air to, to air dry. You're not supposed to use compressed air to dry it, but in actual practice, it's not gonna hurt anything if you wanted to expedite it. But you wanna look at the rollers, and you wanna make sure, spin them around, look for any burrs, rough spots, and you also wanna make sure there's no discoloration, and you wanna take the cage and move it on the inner race to see there's not excessive play. Then once it's clean and it checks out fine, it's time to be re-greased. You can use a bearing packer, which is a very efficient way to do it, and there's many different types of bearing packers. Some of the least expensive use a grease gun. The only caveat is that you have to make sure that the tube of grease that's in your grease gun can go into a roller bearing, that it's not just a generic grease for like a ball joint or what have you. Or you could do the old fashioned way and you could pack it by hand. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pack it by hand. You're gonna take some grease, you're gonna put it in your hand if you choose to do it this way. You're gonna take the wide side of the bearing and you're gonna start to knead the grease into the gap between the cage and the inner race. Your goal is to keep doing this around the whole circumference of the bearing until you have grease coming up between the rollers and the cage. It's that simple, it's a dirty, greasy job, but it's very important because if you lose a wheel bearing going down the road, especially with a grain cart, you've got a lot of problems. That's not, that gets ugly very fast. But the thing about a bearing is that it talks to you for quite a long time before it goes bad, so listen. You have a blessed day and I'll see you next time in the Firestone Farm Shop. Join me at sale to see what a low hour John Deere 9360R sells for after these brief messages. I'm in a massive consignment sale being held by Weeman Auction where this tractor caught my eye. Now what we have here is a 2013 model 9360R with just a little over a thousand hours on its tack. Imagine a six year old four wheel drive with just over 1000 hours. Now field work is just around the corner and this would make a great tractor to pull a big planter for a large operation or a tillage tractor for a medium sized farm. So what's a tractor like this worth? I'll let the facts weigh in rather than speculate. I checked in on Deere's used equipment site, machinefinder.com, where I found 12 2013 model 9360Rs. Their asking prices range from $152 up to $211,000. I narrowed that range down and looked at tractors with just comparable hours. Remember, this tractor had just over 1,000 hours. Now I found three tractors worthy consideration. A tractor with just 601 hours in Ohio carried a price tag of $180,000. And then there were two tractors in Michigan with around 1,400 hours, both of which had asking prices of $209,000. But this tractor sells at auction today and thus could fetch a different live sale price. To get a better feel for what it might bring, I'm gonna go talk to a Weeman auction expert before this tractor sells. I'm talking with Kevin Weeman. We're looking at the John Deere 9360R. That's the baby of John Deere's four-wheel drive tractor line. It's kind of a specialized tractor, isn't it? Absolutely, got a PTO on it, gives you a lot of versatility as a, as a machine in your operation. What attracted me to that tractor, it's what, a 2013 has just over a thousand hours. My gosh, barely broken in. Right. So, I mean, this is like buying a, a like new tractor and you're not going to have to pay like new prices, right? Absolutely not. If it's on an auction sale, it's going to be a bargain for somebody if they've been shopping retail on a dealer lot. 
So those are the type of things you need to look for if you're looking to upgrade your machinery because that could be a great sale. Absolutely, and if you're gonna buy a used tractor on, a, on an auction sale, those with a thousand or less hours are the ones to buy because you're going, that tractor's got a lot of life into it and oh it gosh. can't have a lot, it just can't have a lot of problems. But if you want a little background, give you a call? Give us a call, we'll give you the previous owner. We can also do the search on the serial number. It'll give you its pedigree since it came off the showroom floor. And even though that's a pretty good deal on horsepower, there's still gonna be a fair amount of bidding online because guys love kind of Midwest tractors, don't they? Especially four wheel drives. And I think after the wet conditions that we had in the fall of 18, anybody that's thinking about how am I gonna get through this crop you know, all this ground next year, four-wheel drives I think are going to be very popular. You saying that makes me wonder about track tractors. Are they coming up in price because of the... There's not a lot of them around, but when you find them, they're in very high demand. Trying to put a price bid on that, what would be the top bid you think that tractor would go for? I, my guess on the top side of that track would be 180, 185. Well, let's go watch the 9360 RSL. And 165, now 75, and 160, 75. Yes, now 170, 170,000. And 170, 160, 75, 170, 170,000. And 160, 75, now 70, another 170,000. 160, 75, 170, 170,000 on a big powerhouse here. 170,000, the only way you can go wrong is not to buy. 170,000. 167,5, 170, 170,5, 167,5, 168,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,5, 167,
For more about this idea and other farmer inventions, go to agriculture.com slash TV. Please join us next week for another outstanding show. Our product test team of farmer evaluators report on new tool innovation. Jolene Brown discusses the potential pitfalls of hiring family members for your farm. I track one of the best deals in farm iron, large grain carts. And we feature a farmer innovation of a tiling machine on all around the farm. See you next week, right here on Successful Farming. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video. And click here to see more great episodes from Successful Farming Television.